Yeah, no, this is just crap. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to World War Three to a new episode. And excuse me, yesterday I was on Google and I found this just horrific headline. They're still using these words that I just ah. I'm just gonna read this. Elon Musk left a South Africa that was rife with misinformation and white privilege. Can we please stop with the word misinformation? I've seen it several times now. Bill Gates was using it earlier this week talking about how dangerous Elon Musk was saying, you know, he was worried if Elon Musk took over Twitter, it would spread misinformation. Guys, they're using the words misinformation and disinformation as ways to silence and to stifle the First Amendment. They're excuse words. If you don't like what someone is saying, say they're saying misinformation. Say they're saying disinformation so you can silence them. That's what Twitter's been doing. Now Twitter and people are throwing a little hissy fit because Elon Musk wants free speech and you see articles written like this and I just, I immediately dismiss this article. If in your title you put the word misinformation, I will immediately dismiss it. Immediately. And the fact that Americans see a headline like this and they read it and they get excited for it. Oh, come on guys. How many, whenever you see the word misinformation, whenever you see the word disinformation, it should give you a major, major red light warning, ding, ding, ding. Whoever is writing this has an agenda as, and is trying to stifle some sort of free speech from someone. Like Bill Gates, you know, he's someone, he doesn't want certain people to be able to speak their minds, so he says, I'm concerned about misinformation, yes. It's a gateway word. It's an excuse word. It's saying anyone who doesn't agree with me, I'm going to label your stuff disinformation and I'm going to take you off Twitter. That's what they've been doing. And we see headline after headline after headline and it's just like, stop using those words. When will people realize whenever I see those words, it disqualifies it. It, it, it does. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just, I see it. And the thing is, I've seen it before. They create the governance board, the misinformation governance board, right? I saw this happening before it was even done. I said weeks ago the words disinformation and misinformation were going to be used to uh, harm and take away many people's first amendments on social media, which is what they've been doing. Now Elon Musk is trying to buy Twitter to instill the first amendment, and you've got some of these people throwing temper tantrums about everyone having free speech politically on social media. Oh my goodness. It really is bringing out the ugly in some of these people. It, speaking of ugliness, let me get to this tweet. Hold on, guys. Let me find this. Where is this? We've got it right here. Okay, this is a great one. This is a grown woman, by the way. This is a grown woman. I'm going to read this. I almost want to get pregnant with Trump's baby and let it get to full term just so I can rip it halfway out and cut its fucking head off. You know, some people will laugh at this. I'm sad for this woman. Literally, I am sad that this, that a grown woman who is verified and who probably is one of the people that says we shouldn't have free speech on Twitter because there's too much business. This is the exact person. This is the exact type of person who tweets stuff like this that says other people shouldn't have a voice on Twitter because they're spreading harmful information, aka information that I don't agree with, aka they might spread information that might influence other people to vote against my party. This woman, this is a grown ass woman tweeting this out. I'm not going to laugh at this. I feel bad for her. She's really messed up. If you're going to tweet something like this out, again, you know, is it funny that a grown person is tweeting this out? Yes, but am I going to laugh? No. Because the first thing I think, I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry you're this immature. There's just a, la there's just a maturity issue with someone like this when you tweet. Like, it's, are, are you, can you take a step back from the keyboard and take a breath? Like, this woman deleted it, I believe, but it's just, it's so ridiculous. It really is. And those are the type of people that are begging for more censorship. People that are tweeting stuff like that out. They're the type of people that are begging for more censorship. And they're the type of people that use the words misinformation and disinformation. Now, this is just all time. 
A satanic temple says they will open religious abortion centers in states that ban abortion. And this was on Reddit, so the person responds to them saying, Good on them! Sounds like I'm on Satan's side since they make more since then religious cons since they make more sense i'm guessing that's what they meant to say then religious conservatives this person that's uh, making this message doesn't even make any sense they, they don't even know how to spell correctly uh but i just I, that is funny right a satanic r center yes abort your baby kill your child that's the side you're on i'm not going to get into the whole abortion debate whatever but it's just funny that a satan <laughs> satanic temple is on the side of the Democrats. They've got the Satan people. That's good for them. Oh, you, you can have them. You can have them. Now, this, I guess, was just a coincidence, but you've got President Biden's Twitter account and then Joe Biden's personal Twitter account tweeting out two conflicting messages at the exact same time. So on the left, both of these messages were tweeted supposedly at 10.30 a.m. on May 5th. Exact same time, 10.30 a.m. I'm sure these are scheduled tweets, but you've got the one on the left from the uh, President of the United States Twitter says, President Biden, on this national day of prayer, no matter how or whether we pray, we are all called to look outside ourselves. Let us find our hearts and prayers prayers the determination to put aside our differences come together and truly see one another as fellow Americans and then on the right uh, Joe Biden's personal Twitter account at Joe Biden tweets out let me tell you about this ultra mega agenda and it's a video of him talking about with that ultra mega quote being completely dividing towards the American people and this was tweeted out supposedly the exact same minute 10.30 a.m. So it's just a horrible job. Once again, the Biden administration, I'm not putting this on Joe Biden. I doubt he's tweeted ever in his life. Maybe a few times. Obviously, you know, you're not going to be tweeting if you're the president. You have people to do it for you, uh, ex unless if you, except if you're Donald Trump, right? Um, but no, this was just a terrible, terrible lack of communication. You'd think they'd be able to realize if we're going to tweet one thing out on one of the Biden accounts that's promoting prayer and promoting unity, Maybe we shouldn't, at the exact same time, tweet out something so divisive and really, you know, making half of the population seem like terrorists on the other account. But again, this Biden administration, like, what are we doing, folks? Come on. We, we, we're we that incompetent. We're that incompetent to where we tweet out two conflicting statements on the one, two, the, the two different Joe Biden accounts. That's how incompetent the Biden administration is. I understand you're going to say different things. It's politics. You got to put out, you know, the one message saying we all got to pray for each other, whatever. And then the other message, it's a political attack. I understand that. But just the idea of tweeting it out, this, out, out at the exact same time, it's a horrible look for optics. Just horrible. Just horrible. I support the current thing loyalty card <laughs> these are always you know they're, they're crap they're cheap memes they are but they're funny the, look at the second one the one with the shots in the side of the head <laughs> the, one, the, the four shots did you get the fourth shot uh, the, the ukraine disney the gay pride thing twitter the verified accounts it, it's just funny i thought that was a a cute little thing there u.s relieved as china appears to heed warnings on Russia. I said this is exactly what was going to happen. China is not going to risk alienating the entire West just to support Russia in this war. They'd much rather stay neutral when it comes to their relationship with the West. You can see this article two months after warning that Beijing appeared poised to help Russia in its fight against Ukraine. You, senior U.S. officials say they have not detected overt Chinese military and economic support, a welcome development in the tense U.S.-China relationship. So, not surprising at all. Very smart if you're China. Be neutral. Don't come out and be aggressive against Russia, but also don't support Russia to where you pit yourself against the entire West. Not surprising there. Not. And then I thought this was a very uh, interesting headline. China wary of Russia-type sanctions. 
Uh, but Beijing financial nuclear bombs are powerful deterrent. So that's basically saying China has so many relationships with so many different companies, especially in America, financial relationships. If America were to sanction China like they're doing to Russia, it would significantly hurt these multi-billion dollar companies that are blatantly profiting off of the use of this ridiculously cheap labor manufacturing. That's why all their crap is made in China. That's saying it's this headline is saying it's a lot easier to throw massive sanction sanctions on a country like Russia than it would be on a country like China because China has done such a great job of kind of weaving their and weaseling their way into having some sort of influence over the American economy through the use of getting in bed with these major multi-billion dollar American corporations. You know, they've got us by the balls right now. That's why if China does something to Taiwan, it's way more complicated potentially sanctioning China and for anyone else even too because that China has relationships with countries from Western Europe, obviously America. They're in bed with everyone and they've kind of weaseled their way in to make it very cloudy. It's not like Russia to where if we sanction them, we're not going to have a ton of immediate economic blowback as opposed to if we sanction a country like China for invading Taiwan, there is going to be a lot of issues when it comes to these billion dollar United States uh, companies suffering big blows because of their reliance on China. One of the most amazing things uh, about, you know, when it comes to China is China has more NBA fans than America. Think about that for a second. China has, and, th and I looked this up and it is true, China has more NBA National Basketball Association fans than America. So it's like there's a reliance and that's another great example of China weaponizing their massive population, using it as influence and saying to the NBA, listen, most of your fans, a lot of your revenue comes from this country. So we're going to have some say in how you run things, your overall demeanor, your overall promotion of our products, promotion of our government. You can't talk bad about us. That's what China does. They weaponize their massive population and they have such a great, unbelievable control over their population because they are communist. Yes, there's issue when it issues with communism when it comes to innovation, but if you're the government and you have a massive amount of people, specifically a massive amount of people in a small condensed area like you see in Shanghai and Beijing, these major cities in China, communism allows you to control these people it controls so many different people and they use their population and just how much bigger it is than the United States to really influence America. It's like the NBA having more fans in China. China, the NBA is going to have to be influenced by China because they rely on China and the Chinese fans for massive amounts of their revenue. And that's the same thing, the same type of relationship when it comes to major corporations in America going overseas, going to China because it's cheaper, because they're slave labor, because they can produce pro products at a very small price, ship them back to the United States, sell them in America for a massive markup. This is exactly how China does it. And if China wants to invade Taiwan, it is so much harder to sanction the Chinese due to the relationships the Chinese have created with these massive, powerful America corporations. Very, very interesting stuff to talk about, guys, but that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.